Alright, what's up everybody? We're back. My name's Adam Meckler. We're gonna talk about playing the blues today. Before we get started, smash that like button, hit subscribe so you can get notified about other videos. If you hit the little bell, then you'll get a notification every time I post a video just like this. Uh, we're gonna talk about how you can approach playing the blues as a beginning blues player. The first thing you'll probably hear about when playing the blues is the blues scale. The blues scale is this scale that kind of sounds bluesy. So kind of built into the scale is this bluesy sound. And that sounds cool, right? You can make a lot of really cool sounds with the blues scale, but there's other ways to play the blues too. So we're gonna talk about that as well. There are two rules that you can kind of always safely assume. If you're playing over a blues, the blues scale is gonna work. It's gonna work. We kind of say that it's not gonna work, or we say that it sounds bad. It doesn't really sound bad. You can you could you could take a really good solo just playing the blues scale. A lot of times you can think, I'm just gonna use the notes of the melody. That's a really great way to know what notes work over the chords of any song is to is to take a look at the melody. And rule number three: think about rhythm, think about groove, play confidently, have a good time. I feel like playing confidently is such a big part of improvisation. I mean, even professionals, we don't feel amazing about <laughs> improvising. A lot of times we have a, a certain amount of self-doubt. I didn't sound good on that solo. That's not really what it's about, right? Improvisation is about communication. It's about connecting with the other musicians of your band. So you've got your three tools for playing a good blues solo, but what if you want a little bit more in your solo that's gonna make it sound a little bit cooler? We're gonna learn where the chords happen and we're gonna to learn to arpeggiate those chords, just the root and the third. Now, if this sounds weird to you, just hang with me, you're gonna figure it out. The blues is how many bars long? Did you say 12? Most blueses are 12 bars long. We're gonna do the one chord for four measures, we're gonna do the four chord for two measures, we're gonna do the one chord for two measures, we're gonna do the five chord for one measure, the four chord for one measure, and the one chord for two more measures at the end, okay? I'm gonna put up my fingers as we go. You're gonna play the roots with me. I'm gonna play C, F, and G, and I'm gonna give you one, four, and five for those. One, two, a one, two, three. Okay, that's the whole form of the blues, all right? Jazz players, a lot of times, add a whole bunch of other chords, something Charlie Parker did, everybody loved it, uh, it's pretty sweet. There's actually a new Charlie Parker graphic novel out on Amazon everywhere. Uh, my buddy Dave Chisholm uh, did it and it's really amazing. The forward is by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the great basketball player that my dad grew up watching. Uh, highly recommended, I, I'll put the link in the uh, description here. Now we're gonna add the third. So what's the third of the one chord? Well, it's the third note of C because the one chord is C, right? So, so the third is E in the key of C. The third note of F, we have to count up from F. One, two, three, F, G, A. So the third note of F is A. B is the third note of G. Do it with me, you got this. One, two, a one, two, three. So now you already get to see that the thirds of each one of these chords, these are the chords that the piano player or the guitar player are gonna be playing. None of these notes exist in the blues scale, right? So this is a reason why it doesn't make sense to just use the blues scale when you're playing over the blues. What I like to do is I like to take these new pitches that we added, E, A, and B, and I like to place them in the spots where they belong. And actually the A works over all of it. E only works over the one, and the five, okay? Uh, but uh, E natural, you cannot play over the four chord. When there's a four chord, you have to play E flat. But other than that, the E natural is fair game. And I actually love putting the E natural and the E flat next to each other. So let's get our metronome going. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a solo where I only use the notes we just did. I'm only gonna use the root and the third of each chord. One, two, a one, two, three. most awesome sounding thing but if I take that and I add in the E flat and I add, add in some of the stuff from the blues scale so I'm gonna take those notes and I'm gonna add in blue stuff two a one two mm. So I use a mix of the blue scale and the notes from our arpeggio and all of a sudden I have this really soulful sounding blues sound. In my mind, the reason for that soulful sound is the A and the D. Those two notes are really great over the blues and they don't exist in the blue scales. So here's what I want to do with you. I want you to use these groups of notes that you just learned and I want you to improvise. We're going to trade, all right? One. Two, a one, two, three. Fours, fours. job those of you who improvised along with me thank you so much for hanging out please hit the subscribe button hit the like button comment in the comment section let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see thank you so much for watching bye